What is going on guys? This is Mia Sin. So a few days ago I made a gimmick puppet video and I said essentially that if the video could get a thousand likes I would be making a spreadsheet video very similarly to what I did with Raid Rapture and that video was a complete success and I owe it all to you guys so thank you so much for the support and basically this is going to be again the same thing so 10 combos as well as the deck profile playing through all kinds of hand shops. This is all the information that you need to become the best gimmick puppet player out there but also understand how to beat it. But yeah before we go any further I would really really appreciate you if you could smash the like and subscribe button because this video took me well over 10 hours to make uh, of course i had to like figure out all the best lines through hand shops with like very realistic hands and if we can get to 1000 likes i will be making a live stream solely on this deck and i'll answer all of you guys uh, all of your guys's question uh, during the live stream obviously uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and check out my coaching link will be in the description box below as always if you want some coaching one-on-one -on, -one on any kind of deck i got you i'm your man and with that being said let's get into combo number one. Alright, so combo number one, you can FTK with two cards through Ash and obviously Valor and Mourner because those hand shops do absolutely nothing if you got the field spell. So yeah, it's crazy that your opponent could have three hand shops and it's not enough. So yeah, the first action is activate the field spell. Nobody's gonna Ash that, obviously, unless you're stupid at the game. There is no reason to Ash something that I could literally physically hard draw the card and you lose the game. Or I could draw like the other one card FTK and then kill you. Uh, that's going to resolve and then I'm going to be going normal 7 scissor arms. You could ash that if you want to. You can't Veiler or Mourner obviously. I mean you definitely can't Mourner. And you can Veiler. It's just not going to do anything because it's unaffected by non-XC's monster effects. So yeah, that's going to be resolving to send the Terra baby. So again, whether you ash this or not, it doesn't matter because I get what I want. Which is make you, well make the ash unusable because now that I use the effect of Terra baby in the grave... My opponent cannot respond to any of my gimmick puppet monster effects with cards or effects for the rest of the turn. This is stupid. Like, it's, it's actually a custom card. Even when you summon it, it's broken. And in the graveyard, it's broken there. <laughs> so yeah, now I can go Bloody Doll Effect, Reveal, this is Exorcister Martha, and I am unaffected by Ash. You see, my opponent cannot respond to any of my effects. So I can summon the Little Soldiers by revealing the uh, Rank 4 Gigantes Doll. And on Summon, Little Soldiers is kind of like a Mathmex Circular and Foolishes for Cost. And its actual effect is to make it level uh, 8. Well, I mean, either level 1 or 8. You can only send a level 1 or 8 monster with little soldiers. You can't send a level 4 because it has to become the level of the monster that you send. And either way, the, it mentions it with a different level from your deck to the grave. Anyways, we're going to be sending the Cattle Scream and then overlay into the Fantasix Machina. Uh, search for the rank of magic and then evolve into the uh, uh, Dark Strings just so that we can have a high attack monster on the field already. And then detach the uh, Machina in order to revive back the Cattle Scream. And make the uh, Scissor Arms level 8 thanks to the Graveyard Effect of Little Soldiers. And now overlay into Puppet of Strings, recycle back the Rank of Magic, detach, uh, put a Dark, uh, well sorry, a String Counter on Dark Strings. And then evolve into Dark Strings number 2, destroy Dark Strings number 1. And Chainlink 2, revive back the Machina and recycle back the Rank of Magic. So we destroy, we burn our opponent for 33 and we draw one card. So that's the effect of Dark Strings. All the monster with String Counters die. And we inflict damage equal to the attack of the highest monster. And we also draw one card. So that's that's crazy. It's a lot of things happening at the same time. And now we're going to be going Bloody Doll Effect. Recycle itself back from the graveyard to the hand. Evolve the Machina into the uh, second Machina, the Fanatics. And then surge the Puppet Parade. Detach in order to revive back the Dark Strings to our opponent's field. And then we're going to be going Underworld Doll. Uh, well, Dimension, the, the field spell. Revive back the Puppet of Strings to the opponent, and then go into Chimera Doll, and that is going to be searching, well, I mean, foolishing the Dreary Doll, and also Special Summon the Bloody Doll from the hand. That's actually a really neat play, because we can't go into Terror Baby since we had to foolish it, uh, so that is the best thing that we can do. Again, two-card combo, it's very clean, it actually works out. And then Dreary Doll is going to be summoning itself back by banishing the Scissor Arm, so it's free fuel for Dreary Doll. And then overlay for Giant Grinder, and our opponent controls 2xc, so we can destroy both, it's now once per turn. Uh, it's up to twice per turn, and just like that, our opponent takes 63, and that is going to be game. So our opponent's Ash was never useful because, again, you can never respond to any of my gimmick puppet monster effects, and all of my monsters are unaffected by non xc's monster effects. So it, it's ridiculous. Like, these three hand shops, they were just looking at me all along, and they did nothing. So yeah, that's it for this one. Let's get into combo number two. Alrighty, so now I have the same hand mention of the Underworld Dolls as well as Scissor Arms, and I can play through Infinite Impermanence. So I'm gonna go mention of the Underworld Dolls to surge the Bloody Doll, and then this time Normal Summon Scissor Arms in order to send the Biz Doll, not the Terror Baby, and this one has a graveyard effect very similar, so uh, I can banish it, and then my opponent cannot target Gimmick Puppet Monsters I control with card effects this turn. It's this turn, so it, even the Gimmick Puppet Monsters that aren't on the field yet are still... Um, you know, uh, affected by this clause. It's ridiculous. 
So, so this Imperm is 100% useless. And if my opponent wanted to Imperm the Scissor Arms, it ends up being the same. Now you can't use your Imperm on my, uh, on my rank 8 anymore, and you can't do anything. And the Veiler is, again, 100% useless. So the rest of the combo is, for the most part, pretty much the same. The only difference is that now, when we go for Chimera Doll, we don't necessarily have to do the same play where we uh, special summon the Bloody Doll from the hand and everything. We can straight up just surge the Terror Baby and then extra normal summon because we do get that thanks to the um, Ma Makina. So that is one thing to also know. If you draw the rank of Magic and you have to extra normal summon the Terror Baby, uh, it's not going to work. <laughs> You're going to have to have another extender. Uh, but if you... Um, if you went for the first route that I showed you, you're not even using up your normal, uh, your second normal summon anyways, so you can FTK regardless, uh, which is kind of crazy. It's like the one Garnet in the deck, and it's still fine to draw. It's it's nuts. Uh, when's the last time you saw that? Imagine bra drawing Brilliant Fusion and Gemini Garnet when you only uh, only play one, and you can still play very well. Anyways, uh, Makina revive back the Dark Strings again. Say, same thing for the for the very beginning of the combo, and then revive back the Puppet of Strings, and then Camerodal. This is the part that I mentioned. So you can send the Dreary Doll. Again, it's it's one or the other. You can also go for uh, Terra Baby. It doesn't really matter too much. And then Dreary Doll, revive back. And then go for Giant Grinder, destroy, destroy. Uh, but yeah, we did have the Toy Soldiers in the graveyard, I believe. Oh, actually, we didn't. Yeah, okay. So you know what? It did matter that we had to, to go for that sequencing. Never mind, I take it back. But it's nice that, again, yet again, we don't have to rely on uh, the extra normal sub in. So again, drawing the rank of Magic would have also been FTK in this situation. So yeah, the Garnet, again, does not matter whatsoever. So that's it for combo number two. Let's get into combo number three. Okay, so can you FTK through a correctly used Nibiru? And the answer is, of course, yes. The card does nothing. It literally just does nothing because it doesn't affect your monsters, only your opponent's monsters. But you can circumvent that uh, with correct sequencing. So yeah, this time you search for little soldiers. You send the Bloody Doll. It becomes level eight. And then Bloody Doll effect, reveal, summon the Cattle Scream as well as, well as itself. And then go into the uh, Machina, search the rank of magic. Uh, this time it does matter, <laughs> uh, because we're not going to be able to recycle back that bloody doll again, so we can't do the play where we foolish the Dreary Doll. We had Dark Strings, and then detach the Machina, summon the Puppet of Strings, recycle back, and then put a String Counter on Dark Strings, and evolve into Dark Strings number 2. Chainlink 1, Chainlink 2, again, the very start of the combo is always, pretty much almost always the same thing, but there are some situations where it's different, so yeah, it's, uh, it's not a super linear combo, it's really complicated to play. Anyway, search the Trap card. And this is where it gets uh, rather interesting because you do have to have good sequencing. If you use the effect of Makina now to revive back an opponent's, well, uh, one of your gimmick puppet monsters on the opponent's field, and your opponent Nibiru's you, you don't have FTK because you wasted all of your monster reborns to do nothing. So you have to do uh, everything uh, step by step. So now we're going to be going into the Foolish Barrel to send that Dreary Doll in the grave uh, so that we have one extender. So basically the combo is, the, the one card combo as well as any extender, it doesn't have to be anything specific. And then we're going to be summoning that extender, again, doesn't have to be specific, it can be like literally any machine that you can summon. And then we link it off as well as the Dark Strings for Chimera Doll. What really matters is that uh, we don't get rid of that Machina, we need it on the field in order to kill our opponent. So yeah, now we can go for the effect of Chimera Doll, search the Terror Baby, and then extra normal summon off of the rank 8 when you search the rank of Magic. That is the reason why, yet again, drawing the rank of magic sometimes can be a garnet because if you hard draw it, then you can't use the effect to detach, to surge, and get the extra normal summon. It, it's all in one effect. That is going to be a monster reborn, so we can revive back the bloody doll, and then toy soldiers or little soldiers boost the level by 4. Go into giant grinder and then use the effect, burn for 33, and then we still have one final monster reborn, so we can go Makina, revive back the dark strings again, and then we can go giant grinder to destroy, but at this point, our opponent will chain Nibiru. So if we get Nibiru here, all of our monsters stay on the field because again, we're unaffected by non exceeds monster effects, but well, our giant grinder was unable to destroy anything, so we burn for zero, but it's completely fine because this card right here, Fanatex Makina, whenever our opponent, uh, whenever a monster is special to summon to your opponent's field, even if it's not our opponent summoning it, even if it's us summoning a monster to our opponent's field, we can target one of them, destroy it, and then burn our opponent for half the attack of the monster. Which is insane, because in this situation, Nibiru has so much attack, and our opponent has 1400 uh, life points, that the fact that Nibiru has a lot of attack plays against uh, our opponent, and it makes it so it's still game. It's crazy, because if Nibiru had less than 2800 attack, the combo would not be able to win through Nibiru. But yes, now, even if you use Nibiru completely perfectly, it's not going to be good enough. A two-card combo is still plenty to, to beat Nibiru. It's, it's ridiculous. It's insane. 
you are never safe against this deck absolutely never like the best hand traps in the game just still does not be this deck even if you used it well that is a completely wild but yeah that's it for this one let's get into the next one okay so in this situation i'm drawing just almost like a, a random hand i have a hand uh, full of uh, gimmick puppet cards as well as uh, one non-engine card so scissor arms Condolence Puppet, Ash, the Field Spell, and Bloody. My opponent has Veiler and Mourner, which are useless, obviously, because I got the Field Spell, but also Ash, Imperm, and Nibiru. So this is a compilation of what can you do when your opponent has five hand shops, and three of them are actually usable against your deck. Well, you do have to use your brain, but you can still get out of it. It's, it's crazy. Like, when there is a will, there is a way. You can always win if you know what you're doing. It's, it's, it's I love this deck, man. I, I really, it's in my top five favorite decks. What, what can I say? That's the reason why I'm so excited to showcase it, even though it, it FTKs a lot. It's it's not an FTK deck, I keep mentioning it that, but it's uh, it's a deck that can FTK without it being a, an FTK deck necessarily. Anyways, first action is uh, Ash, uh, sorry, Field Spell, Search a Monster. If we get Ash, then our Condolence Puppet doesn't have to send a Terror Baby, we can send the Abyss Doll right away. So Ashing the Field Spell is always extremely stupid, you never do that, you always hold it for the Bloody Doll. Because if I disregard Ash and I send Abyss Doll instead of Terror... You can Ash the in-hand effect a Bloody Doll and I have to pass turn. Uh, you are very stupid for Ashing anything other than, yet again, the in-hand effect of Bloody. Anyways, at this point, I'm gonna go Condolence Puppet, send the Terror Baby because we didn't get Ash on the Field Spell. And now our opponent can no longer Ash the in-hand effect of Bloody Doll. So now Normal Summon Scissor Arms use its effect, our opponent can not chain Imperm to that. And we're going to be sending the Biz Doll, and then uh, we can go Biz Doll effect. And from here on out, uh, my opponent's Ash and Imperm are 100% useless because... None of my monsters can be targeted by card effects, like any of them. I am unaffected by monster effects, obviously, except Xyz, which is irrelevant because our opponent cannot summon an Xyz monster turn zero. And my opponent cannot respond to any of my gimmick puppet monster effects with anything. Ash is useless as well. The only hand shop that's left is Nibiru, but Nibiru just does nothing against this deck. Again, this deck is broken. <laughs> Anyways, bloody doll effect revealed the Gigantis doll. And we're going to be summoning the Toy Soldiers. Toy Soldiers is, sorry, Little. Send the Dreary Doll and then overlay for the Makina. Search the rank of Magic. And we're going to be going overlay into the uh, Dark Strings. And then, um, uh, were we going to be going Cattle Scream effect yet? Uh, yes, because we want that Makina in the grave. And then Little Soldiers evolve the uh, Scissor Arms into level 8. And then go into the Puppet of Strings. Recycle back. Again, very, uh, literally same thing as usual. And then Dark Strings number 2, Destroy, Chilling 1, Chilling 2, Revive back our, uh, on our own field. And then Recycle back the Rank of Magic, draw one card as well. So it's nice, even if your combo doesn't end up actually FTKing or, and your opponent is still alive with a little bit, it's fine because you, you plus so much in the combo. Uh, you're doing a lot and you're also searching the Puppet Shop and you're drawing cards. It's just, it never ends. And also Recycle back the Bloody Doll. Oh my god, four cards in hand already. <laughs> Anyways, Rank of Magic into the Fanatics Makina. And again, we're going to try to not use its effect right away. So yeah, Dark Strings revive off of the mention of the Underworld Dolls. And then revive back the Dreary Doll that we initially sent with the Little uh, little Soldiers. This card right here, yes. And now we're going to be going into Chimera Doll. I already showcased um, how this play is uh, really relevant against Nibiru. And then Chimera Doll effect, search for the uh, Scissor Arms. And this is where it gets completely crazy because we have the extra normal summon thanks to the Machina. And we're going to be special summoning the Bloody Doll off of the Chimera Doll because it is what this card does. You search your deck or you foolish for any gimmick puppet monsters. And then if all the monsters you control are gimmick puppet monsters, including uh, minimum one, you can special summon one gimmick puppet monster from the hand. It doesn't have to be the one that you searched. So we can summon the Bloody Doll and then we don't special summon the Scissor Arms because its effect uh, for the Foolish Burial is only on normal summon. So we want to normal summon it which is exactly what we'll be doing right now. And we're going to be sending little soldiers out of everything because this graveyard effect to boost the level of your gimmick puppet monsters is not once per turn. So it is the final graveyard effect that we can use. And we can turn the scissor arms into a level 8 monster, which is the only thing that we need because now we can go into giant grinder and start applying the pressure that we need. So now we're going to be getting Nibiru, that's, that is completely fine. Uh, we can still kill because the Makina can destroy the Nibiru, burn our for 15. And then we can go Makina Effect, revive back the Dark Strings, and then go for Giant Grinder and kill our opponent. You can have Ash, Imperm, Nibiru. If my hand has gas, you are dead, my friend. All right, so, so far I showed, I believe, four combos, including the Field Spell. But what happens if you're a little unlucky and you do not draw the Field Spell? Well, don't worry, because again, you don't necessarily need one specific card to kill your opponent. There are a lot of combinations, it's just that... There's so many to show that it's not even worth it. Like, I might as well just show, like, the real combos when you can't FTK. 
Uh, but this one is one of the few two card combos that actually can FTK without the field spell. There are some other ones that can, like you can draw triple tactic thrust and then force your opponent to use a monster effect because of dark strings, it's mandatory. It's not going to do anything, but then your opponent controls a monster so that you can thrust into terraforming and then terraforming into the field spell. So it's 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 insane. Uh, same thing with triple tactic talent. You can it's kind of like a uh, mechanical, right? You're giving the Gen and Ken to your opponent, and then even if your opponent plays zero hand shops, you can still look at your opponent's hand and the hand loop and do some crazy things. It is so freaking enjoyable. But anyways, the first play is a normal summon little soldiers send the dreary doll, and then bloody doll effect reveal the machina, and then special summon the cattle scream, and then overlay for the machina again. And then detach in order to surge the rank of magic. Very beginning of the combo is the exact same. But it will become completely different at one point. So that's the reason why I can't really afford to fast forward. Uh, now it's pretty much the same thing. So yeah, recycle back the rank of magic and then place a string counter. Go for dark strings. And I want to say this is about to turn into like something that you can't really recognize. Because for the first time we're going to be summoning the Makina on our opponent's field. Which does matter actually. But yeah, recycle back the rank of magic and then burn our, our opponent for 33. And then detach material to put a string counter on that Makina. And we're going to be going Dreary Doll Effect Revive back. And we have to go straight into Camera Doll, which is extremely unorthodox. It's weird that we have to do it, but it is what it is. And also recycle back that Bloody Doll, because now when we go Camera Doll Effect, we can search our deck for Terror Baby and special summon that Bloody Doll. And then go Normal Summon Terror Baby, revive back the Dark Strings. And this had a string counter thanks to the prior Dark Strings. This Dark String, when it is, well, if it is special summoned, we destroy the monster's string, string counters. Not necessarily when it's uh, XC summoned. So it will still destroy that Machina and then draw us one card and burn our opponent for 15. So now all we have to do to kill is burn for 32, which is very easy to do because we also have our own Dark String. So when we blow it out, uh, blow it up with our um, uh, Puppet of Strings into Dark Strings, we can go for game. So we boost the level of Terror Baby by 4 and then go for Puppet of Strings, give a string counter to everything. And you can see where this is going for go for Dark Strings number 3, destroy everything and draw us a third card and burn for game. So even without the field spell, you can still kill your opponent. This is absolutely disgusting. Anyways, from here on out, I will show actual combos when you can't FTK because it's still really, really important to understand how they work. Alrighty, so what happens when you don't draw the field spell? You only draw one card and the other four cards in your hand are maybe non-engine cards. And your opponent has 25 effect veilers, 37 infinite impermanence, and 64 ghost mourners. The answer is, it's simple, you just win the game. Yeah, our opponent could have 7,000 hand shops and it's not gonna be enough because a one card combo is just so resilient in this deck, it makes no sense. It's crazy how our opponent could have 5 back row, literally all the cards that target in the world and it's not gonna do anything. So activate Condolence Puppet, it's, it's a foolish burial, that's it, that, that's all it does. Foolish Burial plays through billions of Veilers and Imperm because we're going to be sending that Bloody Doll and then recycle back the Bloody Doll. Alternatively, you could also physically hard draw the Bloody Doll and do the same thing. And then we can go Bloody Doll effect. Obviously, if our opponent also has Ash, then it is what it is. You can't play around like billions of different hand shops that do this, like that do completely different things. But yeah, anything that targets, not gonna beat us. And then yeah, anyway, summoning the little soldiers and then use its effect, our opponent will Veiler us because he has so many to spare that he might as well. But we're sending that Biz doll so we can banish it and then Erpon can no longer target any of our gimmick puppet monsters. And from here on out, we are safe from interruptions. So we're going to be going into Camara doll and then use its effect in order to search the Terra Baby. We never normal summon, so now we can revive back the Bloody doll and then boost the level by 4 so we can make a rank 8 monster. Again, unaffected by all those Veilers and Imperm. So yeah, search the rank of magic and then transform into the Machina. And then search the puppet shop and then use its effect if we want to. And also make this undestructible by card effects permanently, which is really disgusting. And time has been called because we just burn our opponent. It's this deck is really scary in time. So yeah, it's your opponent in, in simplified game state. This deck is so good. One card always gets you that, regardless of the hand shafts that your opponent uh, has. And if he's playing a deck that only targets, even going second, you're breaking boards super, super easily. Alrighty, so yet again, the one card combo can play through a bunch of veilers, a bunch of imperms potentially. But what happens if your opponent has Imperm and Nibiru? Well, you can always play around one or the other, but if your opponent misplays, you can actually play around both, which is kind of crazy. So what you are going to be doing is Condolence Puppet, send the uh, Bloody Doll, and then recycle it back, and then use its effect, summon the, uh, well, reveal the Gigantis Doll to summon the Little Soldiers, and then use its effect, and we're going to be assuming 
that our opponent does not imprim us here because he, wa he wants to hold it for a little bit. He wants to understand what we're about to do because um, maybe he wants to trick us and then uh, imprim later on and Nibiru, but it's gonna be too late once we send that Bizdal because now we can banish it and then make everything untargetable. And we no longer have to play into the Nibiru because now we can just go, okay, summon number three Makina, detach in order to surge the rank of magic and then evolve into the other Makina and then surge the trap card. And just like that, in four summons, you got yourself a monster that is undestructible by card effect that can destroy any monster special summon on our opponent's field and burn our opponent and also a card that can steal a monster of our opponent controls. So it's a one card combo that po uh, puts up two interruptions through two hand traps if our opponent does not use uh, use them correctly. Our opponent, what, what he must have done would have um, was to uh, imprim us and then Nibiru us. So uh, imprim to make the little soldiers not become level 8 by the way. That would have been good enough because then we wouldn't have been able to go into rank 8 uh, uh, quick enough. And then Nibiru actually would have had an impact. But it's crazy how you need the two hand traps in order to beat this deck because one single hand trap is simply just not enough. Okay, so what happens when you draw a very awkward hand that just looks really garbage because you have redundancy, right? We got double scissor arms. It doesn't look fantastic. Well, mm, spoiler alert, it is. Every hand in this deck is fantastic. As long as you draw a one card combo, I am never complaining. I'm always in a really good mood and this is the most consistent deck in the game. It's actually more consistent than pure snake eyes. It's ridiculous. So you got like a 95% chance to draw a one card combo. I will showcase this and explain this in details in the deck profile. But anyways, obviously step number one is summon scissor arms. I wonder what you're gonna do, eh? <laughs> you have the option of either summoning the first one or the second one. Anyway, send the bloody doll and then reveal the uh, Gigantes, summon the little soldiers. That's the reason why you need, really need to play Gigantes doll. It's a rank four, you're never summoning it, but you need it so that you can summon little soldiers off of it, off of the bloody doll. But yeah, little soldiers send the cow scream and then overlay for Makina. I think you've seen this before, but this is where it gets also very interesting because we're going to be uh, using our extra normal summon very early to go into Scissor Arms and then send the Dreary Doll and then Little Soldiers to transform both into level 8 monsters. Go into Puppet of Strings and then Detach and then uh, this is also really weird. <laughs> Cattle Scream and then go into Dark Strings and destroy this Makina. So we're not going to be FTKing our opponent. I think you can see this. Uh, but yeah, burn for 15 and then Dreary Doll effect, banish and then go for another Puppet of Strings. Recycle back and then go for the effect, so detach, and then go for Dark Strings number two, destroy Dark String number one, and revive back the Makina on our field, not the opponent's field. Recycle back the rank of magic, draw another card, and then go into the other Makina in order to search the puppet trap card. And we can also revive back yet another monster on our opponent's field and burn and destroy. So our opponent is on 15 50 life points. So if he summons special summons, any monster. With over a thousand attack, while we have Ghost Mourner and Makina, the game ends. Because it doesn't take much for opponent to do anything. And if our opponent has cards like Lullaby of Obedience, he's not even in the rage to use them. So that's actually kind of nasty. But yeah, normal summon Scissor Arms, I'm gonna be like, yeah, everything is fine. I want you to special summon a high attack monster because that is going to be super game. So yeah, you summon that Cattle Scream, Chaining 1, Makina, Destroy Chaining 2, Ghost Mourner. Merry Christmas, you take 3,000, you are dead, my friend. Oh, and just as a safety policy, we also had a card that could steal two monsters or upon controls, and we had another card in our hand that we drew, and three other cards, because this is a two-card combo. It's so insane. This deck has, like, the best card economy on Earth, because you always make all of your money back with all the draws off of Dark Strings, and you're burning your opponent so quickly that it it's, it's really similar to summoning a bunch of Masquerades and Despia, you don't even need billions of negates when you're putting your opponent in very low life points because then all it really takes is for you to just burn, like do a one big burn with Makina and like a Ghost Mourner and the game just ends on the spot. It's it's just disgusting. But yeah, that is it for this combo. Let's get into the next one. Okay, so this is by far one of the most interesting and important combos in this video and you really have to understand what to do with it because I th th there, are, there are six cards in this deck that are not one card starters and not non-engine but rather combo pieces. And they're not great to draw, but they're also not garbage to draw. And ironically, if you draw all of them at the same time, you play Yu-Gi-Oh! You're still fine. And as a matter of fact, you also beat Ash, which is, <laughs> it's it's crazy. Like, Ash does nothing, absolutely nothing. And then Valor Mourner do even less when you got the field spell. But again, I can't always show combos with the field spell because that's too easy. I have to start showcasing combos without, and also without the good combos, uh, well, without the good cards. So now I have Biz Doll as well as Dreary Doll and Terror Baby. Not the best hand, but it still gets you where you want to go. 
So yeah, Bizdal, discard the Dreary Dal, and then normal summon Terra BB, revive back, and then go for Chimera Dal, but you're not going to be using the effect right away. Obviously, that would be stupid. Use the effect of Terra BB first so that your opponent cannot respond to the activation of your gimmick button monsters for the rest of the turn. That's super stupid. And then the Chimera Doll is safe to resolve so that we can search for the little soldiers and then use its effect. By the way, you can also play around Jewel by doing that because... Uh, when we go uh, effect of Chimera Doll to search little soldiers and then special summon, the first thing that happens is the little soldiers will use its effect and it is going to yet again be the effect of a gimmick puppet monster triggering its effect so that our opponent cannot respond to Droll uh, with Droll to our little soldiers. So yeah, this beats multiple hand shops, but not Nibiru. It is what it is. Anyways, now we're going to be sending the bloody doll, then recycle it back and then reveal the Makina, summon the Cow Scream. Go into the Makina and then search for the rank of magic, obviously, no shit. And then go into Puppet of Strings and then put a string counter on everything. And then we're going to be evolving the Makina, ironically, into the Dark Strings, not the Puppet of Strings into Dark Strings, so that the only monster that dies is Chimera Doll and we burn our opponent for 15. But we get to spare one monster because we don't want to destroy two of our own monsters with Dark Strings. Anyways, now we've got a Dark Strings with a Makina underneath, so we got to we got to find a way to get it in the graveyard. And the Cattle Scream is the best way to do it, so we can detach it and then revive it back. And then Dreary Doll Effect, revive back by banishing the Chimera Doll. It's completely useless in the grave, so might as well get rid of it. And then we're going to be going into Puppet of Strings, recycle back the rank of magic. And then, yet again, place a string counter on everything. So that this has a string counter, this has a string counter, so he's summoned on top of the one that has a string counter. So that the only monster that dies is the Dark Strings, and you will again destroy it, and then draw one card, and revive back the Makina, and recycle back the Rank of Magic. So we got two draws, with a very bad hand, and we're not done yet, because now we can go Rank of Magic into the other Makina, search the Puppet Shop, and then revive back another monster on our opponent's field, and destroy it, and then burn again, so that our opponent has, what is that, also 1550? Yeah, 1550. So yeah, it's nuts. Our opponent could special summon a monster with 3100 attack, and then we just destroyed it with a Makina and the game ends. And we also have the ability to steal three monsters our opponent uh, uh, controls. So I do recommend summoning that Makina in the extra monster zone, because otherwise we can only steal two monsters. But it doesn't matter, honestly, who cares? If our opponent plays Cyber Dragons and contact fuses with our board, we lose it. We lose anyways, but it is what it is. You win some, you lose some. It's crazy. Like, on, on our opponent's turn, we also have, I mean, the ability to just apply so much pressure. Like, we can destroy the Unicorn. Our opponent now has 300 life points. And then you can go Theosis, summon the Fenrir. I couldn't care less. Uh, steal these two monsters. And then we also have the <laughs> opponent's Fenrir, which is an interruption, which is crazy because the effect is not negated. You want to Typhon me? Sure. How about I banish? How about I also chain Unicorn? Bloody Doll, recycle back to the hand. And then end phase, you can get back your useless monsters. I couldn't care less. My follow-up is insane. You can't target any of my monsters with card effects. Uh, the Unicorn destroy uh, banishing a card doesn't matter. String counter and everything. Service Puppet, Graveyard Effect, revive back. the. By the way, I I'm pretty sure I kept searching. I, I kept saying Puppet Parade all... Uh, all this video, but it's service to Puppet. Anyways, revive back the Dark Strings, destroy everything. And also Ching 2 so I can dodge Ash because this draws a card. And then burn and our opponent is dead and I have 6 cards in my hand. Like, this makes absolutely zero freaking sense. Alrighty, so this is by far the most uh, interesting and most ridiculous combo that I wanted to showcase because... If you're going second, there is a card in your deck that is just completely unfair against big boards. And allows you to actually win through like established boards even if you got zero hand shops. And that card again is Condolence Puppet. It's a foolish burial at any time, but going second, if your opponent controls monstrous special summon from the extra deck, it kind of behaves as a Shadal fusion because for each of those monstrous summon from the extra deck, you get one additional foolish. So you can send like billions of monsters from deck to grave. And there are a lot of monsters with really nice graveyard effects. So first things first, my opponent will use the anime version of Card of Demise. Obviously, uh, screw the rules, I got money. Uh, this is, I mean, it's, it's, it's Ludi Kaiba that played that card, so it's, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, summon Unicorn, I couldn't care less, Theosis, my opponent has Triple Emperor and Valor. Summon Fenbeer, Effect, Search, Rise Hard, blah, 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 that's a nice deck you got there, I really couldn't care less. Uh, get your birth for next turn, ha, <laughs> that's one of the funniest jokes ever. Uh, summon Shangri-La, and then I'm not even gonna get a draw phase. That's just to show you how garbage everything is compared to Gimmick Puppet. Look at this. Shangri-La summoned the Unicorn. From here on out, my opponent has what? One, two, three, four. A lot of interruptions, and it's not going to be uh, important whatsoever because Condolence Puppet can foolish two cards. So I'm going to be sending the Bloody Doll as well as Biz Doll. Recycle back the Bloody uh, with its own effect, and then Biz Doll effect. Our opponent can Unicorn us. I couldn't care less. Make me lose his own. Nice deck. 
And then now best doll, and then we can go bloody doll effect, and my opponent can no longer do anything because none of my monsters can be targeted by card effects. And will you look at that? Imper, Invaler, and Fenrir, they all target. So again, the fact that you can break boards with one single card going second, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of nice. In simplified game state, this deck is kind of just terrifying, and going second is even better than going first. It's it's insane. We yeah, have summon the cattle scream, and then go for a Makina, and then detach that in order to surge the rank of magic and then summon the Dark Strings and place a String Counter on everything, which will matter. And again, this is the reason why this deck is nice going second, because uh, this Dark Strings doesn't always have to destroy our own monsters. It can start uh, destroying the opponent's monsters. And then uh, link off into the Chimera Doll, surge the Little Soldiers, and then Special Summon right away. Uh, use the effect to send the Dreary Doll and then revive back. And then go into Giant Grinder because we got to destroy this uh, Shangri-La because it has double protection. So we're going to be going Destroy Destroy, and our opponent will go uh, Protect Protect. Uh, that's a nice deck you got there. And then Wreck Up Magic, Evolve into Dark Strings, and destroy absolutely everything on our opponent's field. Go Makina, Revive Back and Recycle Back the Rank Up Magic, Burn for 25, and draw one card, and then Wreck Up Magic into the Makina, and then Search for the Trap card, go Battle Phase. This is 64, uh, a lot of damage, and our opponent took 25. And we still have an another way to burn on main phase 2 because we can go Makina, summon back, and then destroy. So this is like over 10,000 damage with one single card through billions of Imperms, Valor, Fenrir. It doesn't matter. The list goes on. You don't need Duster. You don't need Night Lightning Storm. You don't need Dark Ruler. You just kill using one single engine card. That's it. That's all. Gimmick Puppet. Best deck. Let's go, boys. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get into the deck profile. All right, so here is my deck list for the Gimmick Puppet deck. But before we go any further, I would really appreciate you a lot again. If you could smash the like and subscribe button for me real quick, because it is a lot of effort that I had to put into this video. Again, I really had to make sure that everything was optimized, very clean, and as competitive and realistic as possible. Because... Again, I, and I, I love this joke, but I don't want this deck to be a gimmicky deck or an FTK deck. This deck is not an FTK deck by any means. You really need, like, the field spell or terraforming to win, or, like, two-card combos that maybe you're not always going to open. But you need to know what to do when you can't FTK, and that's really what matters. And that's the reason why I showcased 10 combos. Five of them could FTK, and the other five couldn't FTK. Because, again, going second is also really important. Uh, but when you're playing 15, or rather 17 non-engine, going second doesn't really feel too scary anymore. We got 15 hand traps, so 3 Nibiru, which could be like anything depending on what is good that format. Could be Bestials, or could be Ghost Bell, could be Drool, could be anything. And then we got 3 Ash, obviously this card is always nice, 3 Valor, 3 Imperm. And the MVP of the hand trap lineup is Ghost Mourner. Against the opponent, the card is not particularly good. But this card does burn, so in tandem with the Fanatics Machina, this card could facilitate FTKs, so even when you don't have the field spell access and you can't go for the full burn, you can still kill your opponent on their turn using the combo of Ghost Mourner and Fanatics Machina. So that's the reason why Ghost Mourner does matter, and your combo draws multiple cards, potentially two to three cards sometimes, so you can dig into that Ghost Mourner, you're forcing your opponent to use a monster effect, sometimes you can go Talon to draw two, and you still dig into that Ghost Mourner, so yeah, a lot of the draw power, and again, a lot of crazy consistency in this deck, because we have 17 one-card starters, that is, it's a 94.9% .9 chance of drawing, like, a combo, it's too much, like, this is probably the cleanest deck I can think of, and there's not, like, a lot of bad redundancy, because... You can draw two normal summons and play very well. I showcased this in my combo before. Uh, you can draw like a bunch of different foolish burials and play because you're always foolishing different things. Like you can foolish the Terror Baby, the Biz Doll, the Bloody Doll, the Little Soldiers, uh, the Dreary Doll, the Cattle Scream. So many cards that you want in the graveyard. Honestly, if I get shifted, I lose, but it is what it is. Like you can't beat everything. But yeah, anyways, the three bloody dolls, so obviously this card is uh, probably the best card in the deck. This card has a ridiculous effect. It's Exorcist through Martha slash Math Mech Circular. So obviously, when a deck can play a stupid card like that, you have to take advantage of it. Uh, the four field spells, uh, you could also call this card Exodia, and that would be a very fair name. Uh, because that is exactly what this card does. You draw it, you win the game. If your opponent doesn't very specifically have the perfect combination of cards, there is no way you can win. Arguably the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh! at the moment. I mean... At least when it will get printed, but yeah, I can't really think of, like, a better field spell. It's probably better than Mystic Mine. Like, three broken effects in one card? I'll take that any day of the week. Thanks, Kanami. Anyways, three little soldiers. It's a little better than Scissor Arms because this one foolish is for, uh, foolish is for cost. 
and it's on normal or special summoned, and also uh, the graveyard effect allows you to adjust the level of your gimmick puppet monsters while increase by four, uh, which is really nice. So it uh, it allows you to turn your uh, scissor arms and your other little soldiers into level fours, which does matter when you're trying to make rank eights. Uh, sorry, in, into level eights, uh, because level fours don't really lead to anything other than uh, Gigantis Dull or Chimera Dull. Uh, but yeah, this is still a one-card combo on its own, and Scissor Arms is also a one-card combo because on summon you're going to be flushing the Bloody Doll and recycle it back. So anything, any way to get Bloody Doll in the grave means that you get it in the hand. Colin's Puppet is a Foolish Burial or a Shadal Fusion, basically going second, and Foolish Burial is Bloody Doll, basically. Yeah, that's the reason why we're trying to play as many cards that Foolish as humanly possible. And again, there's no bad redundancy, like you can draw multiple of them, and you are completely fine. So yeah, all these 17 cards will allow you to play Yu-Gi-Oh to a certain extent, but these four cards mean that you're FTKing the opponent. And drawing combination of these cards also means that you're most likely killing your opponent. It's a little nasty. Anyways, for the uh, combo pieces, the cards that are not necessarily good to draw, but not always bad. Cow Scream, if you draw it and you have combo, then it is, it's an extender. It's not a bad card to draw. Dreary Doll, very similar uh, principle. You can draw it and it's fine. Terror Baby, if you draw it and you have combo, you're also fine, but... Going second, especially Terror Baby and Bizdoll, I don't want to draw, uh, draw them because I want to foolish them as uh, like for mass uh, using Condon's Puppet so that I can banish them and then use their insane effects so that my opponent cannot respond or I cannot target my monsters. So that's the reason why I'd rather not draw these cards, but if I do, it's fine. They're, they're still playable. Bizdoll can summon itself by discarding any gimmick puppet monster uh, from my hand and I'm playing a really big amount of them, so it's fine. Uh, some people are not playing multiple scissor arms. That's a huge mistake. This card is still very good. And Jury Doll, you should never play more than one because even though it's a Machine Dupe target, Machine Dupe absolutely sucks. Again, I'm the number one Machine Dupe hater on Earth. Uh, that card is utter garbage. And I've also seen some people play multiple copies of Biz Doll that is completely unacceptable. It's not even a Machine Dupe target. The card has literally a thousand attack. Read your cards. Um, so yeah, these four monsters, they're fine to draw. And then these cards are the actual bricks. So Argent Chaos Force is kind of like a Garnet when you're trying to FTK with one card. I mentioned this at least 25 times in my video. And the trap card is Attack at Hamburg. If you draw it, it's not going to really change anything. It's just that you have one less card in your hand. So you'd rather not draw it. So yeah, six cards that are not super ideal to draw. Every other 34 card in your deck are fantastic to draw. Again, 17 non-engine, 17 one-card starters, 34 good cards in a 40-card de deck list. That is unbelievable. And for the extra deck, it's not a really resourceful extra deck because you can't really go into any non-gimmick puppet monster. So forget about Zeus, Typhon, SP, Little Knight. All those cards, you're never going to summon them. So two Fanatics Machina as well as his pre-evolution Fantastics Machina. Obviously, that makes sense why you want to play three of them, uh, two of them. And then three Dark Strings, three Puppet of Strings. You go into double Dark Strings very often in the combo, but sometimes you go into the third one. So that's the reason why it matters more than the evolution of Giant uh, Grinder, which, which is Giant Hunter. That card sucks. And then you have three Puppet of Strings because it is the highest attack rank 8 monster that you can summon to two level 8 monsters in this deck. A double Giant Grinder, the combo uses one, but the second one is just like loose in case you get hit by like a Unicorn, Kashira Unicorn, or in case like the game becomes really grindy. And Gigantis Doll, you needed to reveal it uh, for Bloody Doll so that you can summon little soldiers. And finally, double Chimera Doll. One is involved in the combo. And the other one allows you to have a little more uh, wiggle room. And for the side deck, I initially had like all the Bistools as well as DD Crow as one ofs with Reek uh, cross out, but I decided to cut that and just play three Ghost Bell because Ghost Bell can negate DD Crow and Bistool monsters. So Ghost Bell basically is a cross out for the Bistools and for DD Crow, so I don't have to play bad cards to cover them with cross out. And also, if I draw the one of and I draw cross out, then it doesn't work. Uh, so yeah, Ghost Bell is just a better option and it's a hand trap, so it's really nice. Jewel and Logbird, also a, a, a good card to either cross out or uh, to use against my opponent. And then obviously speaking of the Devil Cross Out, Call by the Grave sucks. It only covers Valor, Mourner, and Ash. Like the the, the, the cards that do nothing against this deck. I want to be able to stop Imperm and Bestials especially. And then one D-Barry because I can cross out it going second. Or I can thrust into it with Tenpai, uh, against Tenpai Dragon if they hand trap me to death. So this is also very important. And then finally Double Lightning Storm and Duster because you need multiple ways of breaking boards going second against back row decks. Uh, floodgates are really, really bad against this deck. I mean, th they're good against this deck. I mean, you don't want to face Floodgates. This is what I'm trying to say. And also, Lightning Storm can destroy attack position monsters, so it's nice. Uh, but I'm always open to changing these cards for other cards in the future. And finally, double copies of Thrust when you're going first. 
uh, because thrust is just insane again you can thrust into terraforming into field spell it's always going to be live for the full effect when you go first which is insane but yeah that's it for this video guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe hopefully this video can get 1000 likes so i can make a live stream on this deck and yeah that's pretty much it for this video i'll see you guys very very soon peace